Learning to manage personal finances is basic for anyone, no matter if you're a student, employee, freelancer, housewife, or do some other type of activity. If you use money for yourself or for people close to you, it is essential to know how to manage it. The first rule for doing it effectively is to know where your money is going. That is, to know exactly what you spend every penny you earn on without overlooking anything. From the gums you bought at the corner shop to those new shoes you just put on. Write it all down, no matter how insignificant it may seem, in a notebook or a simple excel sheet. The second rule complements the first and will perhaps seem very obvious, but it is not. You need to put all your income on paper, whether you only have your salary or you get some other benefit from rent, commissions, etc. Even if you think you know it, write it down anyway. This is what you'll have to pay for all your expenses, so it's important that you have it well dimensioned and in sight. The third rule of personal finance is identify your needs and desires, which are not the same. By needs, we mean basic things that you have to pay for yes or yes, that is, rent, your children's school, food, etc. And by desires, we mean all those things that you would like to have or do, but that you can do without at any given time. Like that trip to the beach, that 50 inches TV, that new set of wheels for the car, that purse you loved, etc. The fourth rule is to prepare a budget, either weekly or monthly, on which you specify the money you will spend on each of the areas that make up your life, from transportation, food, lodging, clothing, to entertainment, internet service, or telephony. To do this, it is mandatory that you compare your current expenses with your needs, so that you can easily determine which ones you can reduce and which ones you cannot, and thus, the budget you create will be a tool to control your expenses. It is vitally important that you are truly aware of what you should and should not spend money on. You don't want to put parting on the same level as paying for the electricity and water of your apartment, something that differentiates those who are not financially healthy from those who are and it has nothing to do with the level of income, is that some have superfluous expenses or that they simply cannot cover, and the others don't. This brings us to the fifth rule. Don't spend more than you earn. If you don't have enough to buy yourself something, or to give a gift to your kid, your spouse, your better half, don't do it. Don't be pressured. Don't swipe the card with the thought that you will see how to pay it later. Spend only what you have. If you're going to use the card, pay it in full every month. Besides the fact that interests can eat you up, using the card irresponsibly can make you think that your purchasing power is greater than it really is. And speaking of interests, let's move on to rule 6. Don't indebt yourself. And if you already owe money or can't help it, make sure you set aside a portion of your budget to reduce that debt whether it's a credit card, personal loan, or mortgage. Make a real effort to keep up with all your payments. Not only can your debt grow irretrievably, but you can eventually lose your entire estate. Banks don't care if they leave you on the street. It is your responsibility to know your payment capabilities well and not to ask for more than you can afford. And if for some reason your calculation failed or you had a laid off, a problem, etc., Contact the bank to negotiate. They will always prefer to receive something now than to go on trial and take more time. And in case of mortgages, it is better for them to restructure your credit and receive less than to keep a house that later has to be auctioned off. The truth is, in these cases, it is better to reach a poor agreement than get into a good fight with them. The seventh rule should be known to all, but unfortunately, few put it into practice. Save. When defining your budget, it does not matter how much you allocate, but put a percentage for savings. You may earn very little and barely make enough for the basics, but as soon as you have a little extra income, save. People don't realize how important this is. When a person is just starting to work, they usually think about spending their paycheck on a car, a trip, 
their partner, etc. I forget to keep something in the bank. Saving even a small fraction a month from your first year of work versus doing it 5 years later makes a huge difference after 20 or 30 years, especially with high interest rates. If you don't have anything to save, then you have to apply the 8th rule. Increase and diversify your income. If you have a salary, and even though you limit your expenses, you can only afford to cover your basic needs, then look for alternative ways to generate money. We know that this is not easy, especially if you live far from work and spend a large part of your day commuting, leaving early and arriving home late. But maybe on the weekends you can do some other things that give you extra cash, while trying not to neglect your loved ones. However little you accomplish will be a great help. If you have the time, then look into starting a small business, freelancing, or preparing yourself to apply for a better job that pays more. There is a lot of free content online that you can learn and use to develop a number of skills that can help you grow professionally and earn a better income as a result. Of course, there are several other ways to generate income, but some are more complicated or time-consuming, such as obtaining royalties for intellectual property, like creating a patent, writing a book, composing a song, or making a YouTube channel, a successful one, of course. The ninth rule of personal finance is invest your money. This doesn't mean that you need to have substantial surpluses in order to buy a property, for example. It's enough to get good advice so that the money you have available yields more than keeping it under the mattress or in a checking account, which pays you nothing. There are several financial instruments that can give you reasonable rates with low risk. If you want more risk, you can try investing in the stock market, either in indices or directly in some select companies, but keep in mind that for this, you need the support of someone experienced, and that in the short term, you won't be requiring all the money you put there, so you can absorb any volatility that may arise without having to take unnecessary losses. In the end, the important thing is that your money grows over time, more than inflation, so that it does not lose value and, when it is already a considerable amount, the same interest it generates, free of risk, can serve as an additional source of income. And finally, the tenth rule is, always have a backup. Within the budget you define, the savings you determine or the investments you make, always consider a minimum amount that you cannot touch and that you got to have available for any contingency. You never know when an unexpected event is going to happen. It can be something as simple as repairing the refrigerator or as complex as an illness. And you don't want to find yourself in that situation having to borrow from someone. Those kinds of circumstances are the ones that end up destroying the well-being of families. You always have to be prepared. If you realize, none of these rules is out of this world. They're sort of common sense. But then, it turns out that that sense is just the least common. People are driven by the impulse to buy things, to impress others, to try to live a life they cannot afford. And in the end, the numbers always tell the truth. If you like this video, please help us by giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. And don't forget to activate the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. And if you think someone might find it useful, share it. Thank you very much.